But what is up boys and girls, it's Seb here with Modify Up. In today's episode, I'm gonna show you how to make a custom adapter plate so that we can run an SR20 intake manifold on a 2AZ motor. The process here can be used to adapt any intake manifold to any engine, provided they have the same amount of cylinders. So let's jump in and check it out. Have you ever thought to yourself, hmm, I wonder what that intake would fit like on my engine? Well, my friends, I'm here to tell you, yes, it is possible. You can run any intake manifold on any engine, providing that they have the same amount of cylinders and enough space for you to fit in your engine bay. Sure, you could just buy the right manifold for your motor, or even build a custom intake manifold with the correct flange. But this can be quite expensive to do, and for some engine swaps, there just aren't any aftermarket support parts. You guys know me, if I can do something cheap and effectively, then you know damn well I'm going to show you how to do it without any fancy tools, CAD drawings or laser cutting. Don't believe me? Check out Gene 13. On my CA18 DET, I'm using a 4A GE inlet manifold with individual throttle bodies on a custom adapter plate. Okay, so let me show you what I'm running on Gene 13. So we have... 4AGE quad throttle bodies, the 4AGE lower intake manifold onto a custom adapter plate, and then CA18 lower intake manifold. Now, as you can see, the port spacing is much wider on the CA18, which is why we're running a thicker adapter plate. So the further apart your port spacing is, the thicker this plate needs to be to correct the airflow path into the runners. So in the spirit of building things that you too can build with your own two hands, Let's take a look at this SR20 intake manifold. This is an S13 SR20 intake manifold with oversized runners. Whilst port alignment is not the biggest consideration when selecting an inlet manifold, it certainly helps to keep the thickness of the adapter plate down when the ports line up in their spacing. The further apart the port alignment is, the thicker the plate will need to be to correct the air path efficiently, in turn, increasing runner length. The most important thing to consider are port size, runner length, and plenum chamber size. So after much internet sleuthing, I found that the SR20 has the same intake port spacing as the 2AZ. So that means cheap parts, and I wanna just show you how you would go about adapting this. So if we take the intake manifold gasket, you can see, once you get this to sit flat, that the intake port spacing is identical. When selecting an inlet manifold from a different motor, a good way to see how far the ports are off is to buy the inlet manifold gasket first so that you can get an idea of how much work is involved before you shell out the big bucks for the intake manifold. Once you've chosen your intake manifold, it's time to measure up both flanges and order the alloy to fit the larger of the two flanges. In my case, I'm starting with a plate measuring 75mm by 400mm by 12mm thick in 6061 aluminium. To start off, I'm going to make a template of the cylinder head flange so that I can use it later on to confirm measurements on the plate. You can simply trace out the flange onto a piece of paper like so, or use an intake manifold gasket. Seeing as the 2AZ uses O-rings to seal the manifold, tracing the flange is pretty much the only option I have. As a flunked out engineer, I know whenever you're dimensioning anything, you need to find your datum point. This is the reference point that all measurements will be based off in a grid. To start, I'm measuring the straight bottom edge of the port to create a straight line on the plate. Then I can create the top line of the port on the plate, knowing that the port diameter is 31 millimeters. I then use the center bolt hole on the cylinder head flange as my datum point in which I can accurately measure out the port spacing and mounting holes for the plate.
ahead and scribe straight lines onto the plate for your mounting holes and center punch them so that we can drill them out accurately on the press. Now we can measure out the port spacing and center punch the points in which we drill out the pilot holes for the hole saw. Find the edge of the port and halve the diameter of the hole saw to find your center point for the hole saw. Then mark this onto the plate so the radius of the hole saw matches the port. That is two points per port. Once we've marked out all the holes for the cylinder head side, we're ready to start drilling. Let's head over to the drill press and drill out the mounting holes and port pilot holes in a small 3mm diameter. You don't want to drill out the mounting holes to their finish size just yet because we want to mark out their position on the inlet manifold. Once your first round of drilling is done, it should look like this with two pilot holes per port and all the mounting holes drilled for the cylinder head side. Now we can go ahead and start on the ports with the hole saw. Make sure you cut at the right speed and lubricate the saw to keep it cool. Now since our port alignment is identical between the 2AZ and the SR20, we can cut these straight on but if you are using a thicker plate to align the ports, you would need to do this step with the drill press bed at an angle so that the angle would match the port spacing on both sides of the plate. Go ahead and cut out the rest of the ports and be patient and accurate. Once you've cut out all the ports, we need to clean them up and flatten out the center parts of the port. You can use a die grinder, but I recommend filing this part by hand for accuracy. Now that we have some ports in the plate that resemble the shape of the cylinder head, we can go and match it up to the SR20 intake manifold. Line up the ports as close as possible and clamp the plate to the manifold. Don't worry about any port misalignment now as the final step is to port match the manifold to the plate, then the plate to the cylinder head. Once it's clamped, go ahead and use a transfer punch to mark out any holes that will need to be drilled on the intake manifold flange. I've chosen to do it this way so I can get as many studs as possible through both the plate and the intake manifold for strength. But you may choose to countersink the cylinder head flange bolts so that they sit flush on the plate and you don't have to drill the manifold. It just depends on your mounting hole layout and if any holes overlap. With the manifold clamp, you can go ahead and center punch the mounting holes in which we'll be tapping threads into the plate. Go ahead and trace the flange outline onto the plate also, so we can cut out the excess material. Now before we cut, I'm going to use the paper template here to check for the flange and mounting stud overlap to see where we need to extend the flange outline on the plate to accommodate both flanges on the one plate. And as you can see, all I need to do is add one radius section here for the cylinder head. Now it's time to cut out the flange. I actually did the straight sections by hand with a hacksaw and then use a jigsaw to cut the intricate sections between the mounting holes. But you do what works for you. Once you have the basic shape cut out, test fit it against the head and make any adjustments necessary with a file and clean up the edges with a radius.
Next, we can drill the cylinder head mounting holes to their finished size. Then, drill and tap the holes for the manifold side of the plate. With the plate mounted to the manifold, we can see exactly which holes need to be modified on the manifold, and also what alterations need to be made to the manifold flange itself. Go ahead and drill out the new holes on the manifold. In my case, there are two lower mounting holes that need to be elongated to accept the factory 2AZ stud, and two upper mounting holes that need to be re-drilled since they clash with the profile of the cylinder head. Now we need to modify the manifold flange to create enough clearance for the cylinder head. And again, I'm using the jigsaw to cut out the fiddly shape. If you made it this far, your plate should look like this with all the mounting holes drilled and tapped, the rough shape cut out, and the manifold modified to bolt to the plate. Next, we need to shape the plate to match the manifold on one side and the engine on the other side. Take the inlet manifold gasket and trace any shaping that doesn't match the port cut into the plate already. These are generally pockets used to direct the atomized fuel onto the inlet valve faces. With a die grinder or file, shape the plate without changing the shape on the other side of the plate. This is also to direct airflow smoothly so that there are no sharp edges in the airstream. Once you've done that, we can clean up the mounting faces on the plate to take away any scribing marks. Now, your plate should look a little something like this. Go ahead and test fit the manifold and make sure you've made enough clearance for things like fuel injectors, fuel rail and any sensors that might be in the vicinity of the plate. The very last step is to port match the manifold to the plate and then the plate to the head which I won't show you here. We'll cover that in another video when I show you how to port and polish a cylinder head. Now let's go ahead and fit this to the car. As you can see, this won't fit with the standard booster in place. Given that it only needs another 15mm of clearance, this would easily fit with a smaller booster from somewhere like Flows. But since I'll be running a pedal box inside the car, let's go ahead and pull out the stock master and booster assembly. Jump in and pull the clevis pin out, the stoplight switch connector and the four nuts that hold the booster to the firewall. Then we can undo the three brake lines from the body at the brake proportioning valve and pull the whole shooting match out in one piece. Now we can fit the plate and the manifold to the motor. Now step back and bask in your own glory of making things fit that shouldn't be there. 
With the SR20 manifold, we can now run two sets of injectors, two fuel rails, and SR20 idle controls. I plan to run a Bosch electronic throttle on this manifold, so idle controls aren't necessary. If you plan to run the throttle body from the engine the manifold came from, all you would need to complete this is the throttle body, the throttle position sensor, and a suitable throttle cable. This opens up future bolt-on manifolds should this manifold not perform to the expected capacity. Do I hear you say IKEA Formula Quads, anyone? That is it, guys. I hope this helps you on your journey in putting things in places that they shouldn't be. If you like what you see today, make sure you tap that like button, subscribe, and hit the bell notifications so that I can keep making videos for you guys to watch. That's it from me. Bye!